Hello? No. Hello? No. Some people are more comfortable with that these days, so... Um, <laughs> Thank you very much for coming out. It's nice to see so many of you here. I, I've got a very strange story to tell you this evening, and I'm, I'm always a bit embarrassed at the beginning of this story because it involves an act of vanity on my part, which I'm not exactly proud of. I'm not the only person who falls victim to it either. Most people in what we laughingly refer to as the entertainment industry fall prey to the same thing. Basically, as we grow older, we acquire the desire to be taken seriously. Happens at about the age of 30. All of a sudden, at the age of 30, every singer wants to be an actor, every actor wants to play Hamlet, and every comedian wants to write a novel. That's the way we're built. <laughs> I could see all this approaching on my horizon as my 30th birthday was approaching, except that on my 30th birthday, my so-called job took me all the way from London, England, to Aspen, Colorado, in the United States of America, and sat me in a theatre watching one of my childhood heroes, Steve Martin, performing a live routine about his singing testicles. <laughs> I thought to myself, fuck it! <laughs> this is brilliant! I carry on. So I did. I carried on being an idiot for another year of my life. And then, a year later, on my 31st birthday, it hit me like a train. I woke up on the morning of my 31st birthday thinking I'm 31. I'm a grown-up. I'm an adult. I want to write a novel. <laughs> so I rang my manager, Rob. That's Rob there. That man is an idiot. <laughs> he took me seriously. That is no way to further my career, taking me seriously. That's what the idiot did. He said, I'll see what I can do. I'll set up some meetings for you. He rang me back a week later saying, I've set up a meeting with a man called Jake. That's Jake there. <laughs> Jake works in publishing. Jake works for Random House Publishing. That is the world's largest publishers. And that man is another idiot. <laughs> he also took the idea of me writing a novel seriously. I end up in a meeting with Rob and Jake, both taking the idea of me writing a novel seriously, which appealed to me. I was 31. I wanted to be taken seriously. That was good. It was nice. It was comfy. And Jake, very young, but also very earnest, very keen that I understood exactly how hard it was to write a novel. He said to me, Dave, Dave, it's very hard work. It's just you, your imagination, and a computer. Are you really sure you're going to put the hours in? And I said, yes, Jake. <laughs> I'm 31. <laughs> I'll tell you how serious I am. I am actually considering growing a beard. <laughs> And as I said that, I locked eyes on Jake, mainly because I didn't dare look at Rob. I knew what Rob was doing. Rob's eyes were burning into the side of my face, thinking, do not fuck up this meeting with your stupid beard talk, mister. <laughs> so I've locked onto Jake instead. He crumbled. He went, y -y you've got a deal. And he took my hand, and there and then, on a handshake, in that office, the world's largest publisher gave me a deal to write a novel on condition that I grew a beard. <laughs> So obviously, I went away and grew a beard, didn't I? If you don't believe me, there it is. There. <laughs> don't know why I'm showing you that, because here it is. Here. And then things got even more stupid. The idiots gave me money. That's no way to get me working, giving me money. <laughs> you want me to work, you keep me hungry. That's how you do that. <laughs> the idiots went and put money in the pot. I have no idea how to explain to a collection of grown-ups such as yourself how I got given money for doing something before I'd done any of the doing of it. <laughs> the best I can think to explain it is to say that this man's stupid and this man's good. 